Thank you, thank you. Thank you, have a seat. I love the passion in this house. When I went home last time, I told our worship team that, that how moved I was by what was going on here. And uh, I just want to commend you. If anything, I think it's gone up a level. Uh, something's happening here that is bigger than you, that is beyond you. Uh, and I hope that you can receive what God wants you to be doing in this season because it's an important season. Well, I want to share with you tonight a little bit about, about God speaking. Our book is actually entitled, He Still Speaks. And when you write a book like that, you get a lot of questions like, oh, really? <laughs> Had a guy come up to me wearing a t-shirt that said, uh, you're jealous because the voices speak to me. He came up and said, so you're saying God really does speak? He says, I hear voices. And I said, a lot of folks hear voices, but there's, o- there's only one voice. And I want to tell you tonight unequivocally that God does speak. He doesn't just speak to special people and special rooms on special days and special places. He speaks to his children. And he wants to speak to you. And he's always speaking. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that is continually proceeding out of the mouth of God. Well, I want to tell you that Jesus promised that every believer can hear God's voice. He promised that. And Jesus keeps his promises. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians 1.20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And the amen is spoken to by us for the glory of God. The apostle Peter says in 2 Peter 1, God's promises are exceeding great and precious. Exceeding means beyond natural limits or supernatural. Great means large. We might say huge. (laughs) Surpassing all others. Precious means of such great value that a suitable price is hard to estimate. One of my favorite promises in the Bible that is exceedingly great and precious to me is in John chapter 10. My sheep will hear my voice. Turn there, John chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. This was particularly applicable to that time. At that time, uh, 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 there was a lot of shepherds. And they all had flocks. And every once in a while, they would all come into town. And they would bring their flocks, and they might have to go to do some business. They might be selling sheep. They might be doing various things. But all these different shepherds would have what they called a shared sheep pen. And all the sheep would go into this great big pen. And then a couple of guys could sit there and watch them while the rest of them got to go to town and do their business. So they brought all their sheep and they didn't have branding. They just put them all in there together. So how did they separate them the next morning? Each individual shepherd would walk up and he would just call his sheep. Some might whistle a song, some might sing, but that shepherd, his voice would cause those sheep that knew him to walk out and those sheep would walk out and the others would stay. Then the next shepherd would come up and he would speak and the sheep would follow him. Isn't that the coolest story? Back in the 70s, when June and I were in our hippie phase, we were sort of back to earth uh, people. We had a a little farm. We had a a garden. We had chickens. We had rabbits. Uh, We had cats and dogs and were making babies and things like that. And we also had seven sheep. Had sheep up in this little pasture that a friend loaned me just next to our house. And I would go out every day and I'd feed them and I'd have the little pan of of, of food and I would just shake it and I would say, sheep, come here. Or I'd say, sheep, and they would all run up to me and I'd pet them and I'd run my fingers through their hair. We were were having them for their wool. We didn't know what to do once we got the wool, but it it seemed cool at the time. (laughs) 
So we, we would go out and say sheep. And so after a while, I didn't use the, 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 the pan of food. I would just say sheep. And here they'd come. And I thought, well, that's cool. They know my voice. And I thought, well, I'll check this. So a friend of mine came out who really liked sheep and she wanted to go see the sheep. So Jean and I went up there and I said, why don't you try calling them? And she, I said, what do I say? I said, well, I just say sheep and they come. So she said, sheep, come on, sheep. Hey, sheep, come on. They wouldn't even look at her. <laughs> then she say, this doesn't work. And I went out and I said, sheep. And here they came. Why? Because they knew my voice. They knew that I was going to do them good and not harm. That I was, going to, I was going to give them food and I was going to give them water and I was going to check on them. When they were having babies and having trouble, it was me and June up there in the middle of the night. They knew that we were for them. Well, our shepherd wants you to know his voice. And the sound of his voice is unlike any other sound. But it's the sound that you can all hear. Amen? Well, hearing the great shepherd's voice is more than just using our ears or understanding with our brains. Some people think they can get prophetic if they go to the class or read the book and they can hear God uh, in, in, by getting more knowledge. It's, all, it's not always about more knowledge. It's about four things. It's about deciding to receive his voice. We can learn to recognize God's voice by spending time listening. I used to talk to my sheep and I would run my fingers through their wool and see if there were any birds in there and stuff. And I knew them and they knew me. Those sheep loved me. They had the look of love in their eyes when I went up to see them. I loved those sheep. They were stupid sometimes, let me tell you. <laughs> but they loved me and I loved them. The second thing is accept what he says. Believing, trusting what he speaks is true and not looking for a second opinion. The third thing is making hearing his voice a part of your life. It's not just for Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings or a conference or a special private time. I believe God's after dialogue and not just monologue. I think he doesn't just want your want list. He wants you to want him. He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to make hearing his voice a part of your life. And lastly, he wants us to obey what we hear as doers and not just hearers only. The oldest book in the Bible, Job, who had some dodgy friends, basically told him to, to uh, give up and die, that God was not going to do anything. And, and I loved what he said so firmly. He said, God does speak. Now one way, now another, though man may not perceive it. So we can proclaim that, but I thought, why would God speak to someone like me? And why would God speak to someone like you? He says in John 10, 27, my sheep listen for my voice. I know them and they follow me. I think there's four good reasons. There's lots of reasons, but four reasons I want to point out why God speaks. And I think understanding why is important. One, because he loves us. He loves us just as much as he loved the Old Testament and the New Testament saints. He loves us as much as he loved Moses. He loves us. We think God really loved the big people in the Bible, but he might not love us that much. Let me tell you, he loves you every bit as much. And I hope you can say amen to that. God desires fellowship with us as he modeled in the Garden of Eden when he walked in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. It says in Genesis 3, 8, that they knew him so well, they recognized the sound of God. Before they ever saw him, they recognized his sound. When I was a little boy, I lived in a house with mom and dad and my little brothers and had two bedrooms and one bathroom, four boys and a mom and a dad. And we had a wooden hall between the bedrooms and I could, I could tell you who was walking down that hall by their sound because I knew my dad's sound, I knew my mom's sound, I knew my brother's sound, I knew when to lock the door. If it was my brother, when they went out, I'd lock it, lock them out. And I knew the sound because I, I was familiar. I knew who that was. Adam and Eve, by spending time with God every day, knew the sound that he makes. Number one, he, he wants to speak. Why? Because he loves us. Number two, because we need him to speak direction into our lives. Just like Moses, Joshua, Noah, Esther, they all needed to hear God in their lives. We're drowning in choices that we don't have the wisdom to make the right choice for. We need God to speak to guide us to make those right choices, those best choices. When I was an early Christian, it was all about 
the right choice, the wrong choice. And as you grow, it, it, it gets, it's more about good choices and best choices. And that's a little harder to understand. You're surrounded by good choices, but which one's the best? And the one that's best is not always the one that you think is best. So you need to hear his voice so you can discern. Number three, we need the comfort and assurance of his voice to know he is with us. How many of you have ever had a Red Sea experience where uh, your back was up against the wall and the enemy was attacking as hard as he could and you didn't know what you were going to do? I've been there a time or two. We take comfort that God wouldn't lead us to a place and then abandon us. I've been in a place that I didn't know how in the world this was going to work out. And I'd cry out to God and I'd hear him say something like, don't worry. I've got this. Just trust me. And then God would do something that only God could do, like parting the Red Sea that I needed parted. He wants to do the same thing for you, and he wants to talk to you about it. He wants you to be comforted that he's going to be there for you. And the fourth reason that I believe God speaks to us, why he does, is he wants us to know him and to recognize his sound. He said, I know them. They follow me. To follow his lead, we must recognize his sound. And I think most of the time, his sound is the sound of a lovesick father. He's looking at us with love, not with judgment. He's looking at us through a filter of good for us and not bad. Some people think if God speaks to us, he's just going to tell us all the bad things we've done. I think you already know those things. <laughs> I think God calls you higher. He never pushes you lower. Amen. Well, how does God speak today? Speak today. He speaks in a thousand different ways in creation, a baby's smile, provision, sunsets. I've found he speaks to me in four primary ways. Number one, God speaks through his word, the Bible. Can I just ask you to quit subcontracting that to someone else? Second Timothy 3 says, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We should read the book every day, every day. When I don't have a specific area that I'm studying in the Bible, my fallback plan is Proverbs. There's 31 uh, pro chapters in Proverbs, like there's 31 days, and whatever the day is, that's the day that I'll read that proverb. Well, on the third of this month, I was wrestling with whether I should, I felt like I should give something to someone, but I wasn't sure it was gonna be good for them if I gave, and I was wrestling back and forth. How do I do this? Should I do this? Is now the time to do this? And I didn't know. So I thought, well, I'm stuck. I'll just, well, it's, it's June 3rd. I'll just read Proverbs 3. And look at, what, look at what it said in Proverbs 3. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow, when you know and have it with you. <laughs> I'm not saying you should open your Bible and point and say, that's God, because that, that can turn on you. Ju uh, Judas hung himself. Go ye, and, <laughs> go ye and do likewise. Oh my God. But I'm saying when you've got the Bible in you and you've got the principles in you and you read the scripture because you know it's God's love letter to you, he's going to speak to you. A lot of times it's, it, it is just gaining knowledge about the principles, but knowledge in the scripture often becomes rhema, a word right then that God wants to speak to you that day. And so it made it really easy for me to make my decision. Number one, God speaks through his word, the Bible. Read it. Number two, God speaks through the Holy Spirit. You don't have the equipment to hear God without the Holy Spirit. You just don't. Acts 8, one of my favorite chapters about hearing from God is when the Spirit told Philip, uh, go down to this street and turn left and go to that street and go along this road, run, along, run alongside that chariot. Okay, then what do I do? I'll tell you what to do. So he starts running along the chariot and there's this Ethiopian official in there and he's reading the scriptures and he said, hey, what are you reading there? Well, I'm, I'm reading from this book. Do you, what do you think about it? I don't know what it means. I wish there was someone that could tell me. He says, well, I can help you with that. So he, from that point in scripture, he told him about Jesus. The guy gets saved. 
then immediately they find a, some water somewhere and they baptize him. And then Philip is translated away, which is the form of trans, transportation that I'm looking for in these days. <laughs> but I love, I love it. God speaks through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, proclamation gifts like tongues and interpretations, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the gift of prophecy. I believe we're entering a season that the gifts of the Spirit are going to go beyond the church walls. I believe that with all my heart. I was coming into Wendy's not long ago and I was, I was there in line and I was in a hurry. And the Lord said, tell that lady at the window that I heard her prayers last night and it's gonna be okay. And I said, Lord, she's gonna think I'm hitting on her. <laughs> but he said, well, do you want me to use someone else? And I said, no, I'll do it. So I get up there and I put my hand up with my ring on it and I'm going, and I said, I want you to know that I'm in love with my wife and I don't have any motives here, but sometimes I hear from the Lord and I think he's speaking to me about you. Do you want to hear that? And she said, okay. <laughs> and I said, well, I think he heard your prayers last night. He said, it's going to be okay. She almost falls out of the drive through and starts crying and crying and crying. And she finally gets control of herself. And I said, I said, "Hun, what is it? And she said, well, last night my husband left me and I think he went off with my best friend. So I said, can I pray for you? And I prayed and I said, Lord, turn him around, bring him home. So I said, I'll come check on you in a couple of days. A couple of days later I came back and, and I pulled up and she said, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and I said, well, what is it? And she said, well, the night after you prayed, he came home and he asked me to forgive him. And, he's, and he, we went and saw our pastor and we're in church and everything. We're in a marriage class. And this is all, all these things I'd prayed for are starting to happen. So let me tell you. I believe God speaks today through all kinds of ways. And we just, we just got to get confident in it. The five grace gifts in Ephesians 4, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that are given to equip believers, with those guys need, and gals need to go outside the walls as well. We need to have apostles in business. We need to have prophets in education. Superintendent of our, of, of our schools in Russellville is a worship leader in our church. He can't say, thus saith the Lord, but he speaks prophetic encouragement into his kids and into his teachers every day. And the whole atmosphere is changing uh, in the schools. God speaks through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, through the five grace gifts. God speaks through the fruit of the Spirit really loud. The fruit of the Spirit is getting louder than the gifts of the Spirit. Sometimes an act of kindness speaks louder than a message or than a song. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, I think, is getting louder and louder and louder. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love, joy. If we walked in that, people would go bananas wanting to be around us. I heard a guy say once, grin, I wonder what you're up to. Pe people think that Christians are so boring and so down and worried and anxious and and all, all we know is what we're against. They don't know what we're for. It's time to start walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? This is good stuff. Number three, God speaks through godly people around us, through godly counsel. Proverbs 11, for lack of guidance, counsel, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. Godly counsel, not politically correct, pop culture, relativistic junk. Some, I had a guy tell me one time, I was having an argument with my wife. It was in the early days. We don't argue now. <laughs> but I was arguing with my wife and, and, uh, and I was talking to my friend about it. She just won't see it. She needs to know I'm right here. What do I do? I need to hear from the Lord. He said, well, he said, well, son, he was the mentor to me. He says, son, sometimes God's voice sounds a whole lot like your wife's voice. <laughs> <laughs> changed my life. <laughs> changed my wife. It changed my life. It was wonderful. God often speaks to me through friends who love me enough to be honest. Have you got friends in your life that'll speak 
into your life and will be honest with you that you'll actually receive. Number four, God speaks through circumstances. God speaks through circumstance. We shouldn't be so quick to think that every circumstance we find ourselves in is a distraction or it's the devil. <laughs> a same mentor walked into my office once and he said, how are you doing, Wayne? I said, well, under the circumstances, pretty good. He said, what are you doing under there? <laughs> circumstances aren't something you get under, it's something you come over. It's something you walk through. It's something you go around. It's, it's something that you push through. Your circumstances is not necessarily your enemy. Sometimes it's God's way of maneuvering you where you need to be. Sometimes God is trying to show and tell us something we don't know. In Acts 16, Paul had a word from the Lord. He's supposed to go into Asia. And it says the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from preaching in Asia. Wait a minute, I've got a word. But the Holy Spirit prevented him and he redirected him to be able to hear and respond to a call. He said, concluding that God was calling us to Macedonia instead. Good thing, they found Lydia there. And she got saved in her household and from her house, the gospel went all across Europe. And it's come to you here. Acts 18, Paul met two people in a similar profession, Priscilla and Aquila, they were tent makers. He realized God was orchestrating a situation with this couple he had something in common with. And so they were able to, to support themselves and also release the gospel in Corinth, Syria, and Ephesus. Before you pray out of a situation or a circumstance, it might be good to say, God, what are you wanting to do in this situation? What are you up to here? What are you up to here? A few years ago, I was in Atlanta and I was on my way to speak at a worship conference in in Nashville and my plane got delayed and delayed and delayed and I was so frustrated finally I said well God is there anything you want me to do and he said well take out that yellow pad and I started writing down these words for people that were going to be at that conference that I didn't know and I get there and there's a young guy just starting out as a worship leader and I said uh, I said your songs are going to go around the world and you're going to, and, and I prophesied several things. And I said, now, what was your name? And he said, my name is Matt Redman. <laughs> this pastor said, how did you know that? What was that? I said, well, that was, that was a prophecy. how did you get that? <laughs> that started a conversation that we've been friends now for 20 years. And Mike Pilavachi, his pastor, has changed his whole trajectory. He's going toward the naturally supernatural. His goal is to help the Anglican church across Britain learn to be naturally supernatural. And part of it was that someone heard something and they spoke a word into their lives. So my situation wasn't a bad circumstance. It was God saying, slow down. I've got something I want to give you. Amen. We may recognize God's voice through peace or an absence of peace in our circumstances. Colossians 3, let the peace of God rule or umpire your hearts. I want to tell you something. God allows conflict at times in your life, but he always rules in peace. No matter what conflict you have, he rules in peace. There is an eye in every storm if you will look for it. All right, finally, do we have a part to play in hearing God speak? Yes. We can do three things. We can listen for his voice, we can look for his voice, and we can obey what we hear. Psalm 34 says, those who look to him are radiant. I thought you might like that verse here. <laughs> Jeremiah 29 says, if you'll seek God with all your heart, you will hear his voice. Other translation says you'll find him. One translation says he will let you find him. When my kids were little, we played hide and seek. And they couldn't find me sometimes. And so I'd get behind the curtains and I would lift up the curtains and let them see my feet. <laughs> they didn't see my feet. I'd come up a little bit more and finally say, I found daddy. He's right over there. Yeah, they found me, but I was letting them find me because I knew they were looking for me. God's the same way. When you seek him with all your heart, you'll hear his voice. He'll let himself be heard, be found by you. I want to tell you this, it's okay to pray asking God to show himself to you. 
Moses asked God, show me your glory, and he showed Moses his glory. Number two, we can listen for him. Psalm 85 says, I will listen to what God the Lord says. It is a choice to listen. Quit giving that privilege away to someone else. You can listen. People call me up and say, Wayne, could you hear the Lord for me? And I'll say, well, you can hear the Lord for you. I'll pray with you, but you need to hear the Lord. Oh, I can't hear God. Like God speaks to you. He doesn't speak to me. And I'll say, well, something's wrong here. Let's fix this picture. It's hard to hear sometimes because life gets so loud. I'm finding it increasingly necessary to get off the grid from time to time, to just shut myself off, line, and shut down and hear the Lord. David wrote in Psalm 63, earnestly will I look and listen for you. The word earnestly means passionately, intensely listening. You know, it's good to find the best time in your life rhythm to look and listen for God. For me, it's early in the morning like David. Every morning around 5.30, I get up and go outside and I do two things. I say, this is the day the Lord's made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Before my day takes me over, I declare and I proclaim. And then the next thing I do is I say, Lord, is there anything you want to say to me? And I've got a, a pad with me. I've got my phone with me. And when he speaks, I write it down. Sometimes he says things like, well, you're going to see Susie and John today, but I want you to wait till tomorrow. Today, I need you to go see Dan. I'll call up Susie and John and say, I, don't, I can't come today. I'll go see Dan, and, and Dan will be right there in a situation where it's exactly a divine appointment to go see him. God wants to speak to you just like that, just like that. Psalm 37, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait for him to act. Sometimes while we're waiting is when God acts. The last thing is we need to obey when we hear. In Hebrew, the words listen and obey were the same word, shema. So to the Hebrew, to listen without obeying meant that, you have, that what you hear is not listening. If you, to listen without obeying what you hear is not listening. A good friend told me obedience is the evidence of our relationship with God. Obedience is evidence of our relationship with God. Sometimes when I struggle to hear God and I just can't break through, I'll say, well, what's the last time that I know he spoke? And I go back then and I ask myself, have I obeyed what he said? And often that's all it takes. I go back and I make sure I'm doing what he asks. Then I come back over and I say, Lord, is there anything else you want to say? And he'll speak. That is, this is good stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you this. It's okay to ask, is that really you, God? Paul advises in 1 Thessalonians, don't quench the spirit and not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. If I'm in that mode where I'm wondering, is that really you, God? And, and sometimes we'll have prophetic things in our church and every weird person in three counties shows up. <laughs> and they all have words better than everybody else. And, and it's amazing some of the things that you hear. One guy said, I see a spider. It's walking across the table and it's coming towards you. And then another guy says, yeah, I see a fork, stab the spider, move on, you know. People can get a little funny uh, about the prophetic. I will face a whole room of weirdos if one of them might have something in the middle of all that, if there's some precious in the middle of that worthless. And so I will always listen. I will always hear. I will never say, I will not let a guy like that or a gal like that speak to me. I'm always listening for what God might be saying. It's kind of like eating a watermelon. I ate the fruit and I spit out the seed. But let me, let me close by saying this. If you are a sheep, a born-again Christian, our great shepherd promises to speak to you, and he expects you to hear his voice. Now, if you aren't hearing it, there may be several reasons why you aren't hearing. It might be that you've been in a church that's taught you that you can't hear from God. Only the professionals get to hear from God. It may be that you thought you heard one time and it didn't work out good, and you thought, I must have got it wrong, I don't know how to hear from God. Or it may be you can't hear because you haven't become a sheep. You haven't been born again. And that's something we can fix. 
we can fix it right now. What I'd like to do before Tom and I bring some prophetic words over some of you, I would like for you to be able to bypass the middleman altogether and to be he able to hear God yourself. But that won't happen if you're not a sheep. Paul says it very simply in Romans 10. He says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I think there's probably some people here tonight that have, that have been a little nervous thinking God's wanting to say something to me. Well, he is. He's wanting you to be his son. He's wanting you to be his daughter. And if you're here and you would like for me to pray for you, to get things right with the Lord, to invite him to be your savior, to be your healer, to come in and set you free, you need to make a public confession of your faith. So I'm gonna ask you to do something very simple. I'm gonna ask you, and it's, it's not always easy, but we've all, all of us that know the Lord had to do it at one time or another. I'm not gonna embarrass you. It's not about shaming anybody, disrespecting anyone. It's about saying I'm gonna stand up for Christ and I'm gonna be a believer, I'm gonna be a sheep and I wanna be able to hear the shepherd's voice. If that's you right now, I would just like to invite you to stand up wherever you are. And for those that stand, I'm gonna pray a simple prayer and I'm gonna ask the Lord to just come tonight. Amen. I remain standing. I, be I believe there's more. Remain standing. I see four right now, but I think there's more. I just want to ask you right there. Right there, I see that. Somebody else. I think every section needs to be represented, okay? Go ahead and stand, and I'm going to pray. It's not going to hurt. It's going to change your life forever. And after we pray, the King of glory will begin to speak to you as a father speaks to a son, as a father speaks to a daughter. Anybody else? I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe. There's another. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Those of you that have stood, put your hand on your heart so I know whom I'm praying for. And if there, you've got a friend beside you that, or a family member that you trust, it was okay, let them put their hand on your arm if that's all right with you, your shoulder. I'm going to ask you to pray out loud with me. Just pray what I pray. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. Your life's going to be changed forever. You ready? Lord Jesus. I believe that you died for me. And I believe you rose again. Tonight, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. And let me become a believer. And by your grace, I'll follow you all the days of my life. Amen. What just happened is a little representation of what's gone on in heaven. All the angels are rejoicing. Amen. Have a seat, everyone. I just want to say one more thing, and Tom's going to come. And one of the ways God speaks is through a word of prophecy. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. It's to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. Someone said prophecy encourages us in our present, comforts us about our past, and strengthens our future. That's what prophecy is for. From Proverbs 15, 23, how good and timely is a word in due season. Words in due season are words just that. They're timely words that God speaks to us to encourage us. Would you be okay if we just came down and gave some words over some of you? Amen.
This gentleman right here in the blue and white striped shirt. Yep. What's your, what's your name? Stand up if you would. Michael. Hi, Michael. <clears throat> Michael, uh, you're a passionate guy. There's, there's a lot of, um, I watched you in worship. There's a lot of demonstrative expression that comes out of your life. And uh, there's great things. There's many talents that you have. You're an influencer of people. And when I was drawn to you, I, I got this scripture. It's Zechariah chapter 4. It says, <clears throat> um, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace. I think what, what the Lord put on my heart for you is to challenge you, not out of the passion of your life, not out of the strength of your life, but by leaning on the Spirit of God and trusting in him, You'll do great things. It's not about your performance. It's about his work uh, flowing through your life with the power of his spirit. And if you'll just say, okay, Lord, I'll give it to you, and I want you to flow through me, there'll be miraculous things that result because it's the power of the Lord working through you into the heart of people. Can you say amen, Michael? Amen. God bless you. There's a, there's a man right here, and I think a red shirt right there. Can you stand up and shout out your name? Ross. Ross. Ross, I heard this during worship tonight. It's better than it seems. It's more hopeful than it feels. You're nearer to breakthrough than you realize. You're a good man in whom God trusts. A man of integrity. It's not all been easy, but you will see it's all, about, it's all been good. God is always for your good. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned and is turning for your good. Things are falling into place in a better place, in a larger place where there's more room for you. You felt confined, and God's letting you break out into more room. Be encouraged. God is good. Amen. lady right here. Hi. What's your name? Jody. Hi, Jody. I, I saw this when I was drawn to you. Uh, you have lots of questions. You want to know when, how, where, what. Uh, you wake up with those questions. And uh, here's what I heard the Lord say. Uh, I've got it in control. I've, I've got you in my hand. It's okay. You, you won't know all the answers to the questions that you ask. But if you'll trust me, I'll make sure that you get to the right place. He's got everything in his hands. He's got you in his hands, and it'll be okay. Amen. God bless you. Amen. This couple right here, are y'all a couple? Married? Good. <laughs> Craig? You can. I saw you two, and I saw a racehorse, and I saw a workhorse. And they were changing roles. You two are like that. At times, one is a racehorse being seen out front while the other works unseen, outside of visibility. Then the roles change, and the racehorse becomes the workhorse. Workhorse becomes a racehorse. This will be how your callings together will work from season to season. You're perfectly suited to partner together for the glory of God. Be glad for each other and spur each other on. See, I did that, spur horses. <laughs> uh, spur each other on to greater things. And I think at times, you'll be the racehorse. And she'll be in the background. At times, you'll be the racehorse. And you'll be working in the background. And that's how you'll partner. Just be happy in the season you're in. And be glad for each other. Amen. Hi, it's for you. What's your name? Do you mind standing? Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, I saw the word excellence over your life. You're, you are a diligent, faithful, excellent woman. And excellence has opened 
a door for you or it's opening a door for you. And the Lord says, if you'll walk through that door, the, the way has been paved. Your, your excellence has made the way for what God will do in the next season of your life. So say yes and move forward. God will bless you in it. Amen. I assume you two are a couple. <laughs> What's your names? Jason and Lisa. Uh, you guys are really great parents. And uh, there is an anointing beyond your own family. Uh, you're, you, there's other kids that think of you as mom and dad. There's a, a, a fathering skill to guide and direct and instill values. There's a nurturing ability that you have that goes beyond your own family. If you'll open the doors of your house, the neighborhood kids, your, your, your kids' friends will come in and you'll impact kids way more than you've birthed, way, way more than your family. Your, your home will be known as a safe place, a place where people can come and share their hurts and find healing and, and a place of acceptance. Uh, there's an anointing on your lives and on your home to be parents to a new generation. Amen? Amen. God bless you. This is, uh, this is for Stefan. You mind standing up? I just heard this when, I, when you were speaking earlier tonight. The Lord spoke to me and said he's a key player for an important time in this place. You're both a pillar in the house and a prophetic voice of what could be. You bring stability and adventure, a pastor with a prophetic view. You bring stability even as you bring new initiatives of change. A transformational season is at the door. Be at peace as you and others open that door and welcome the Holy Spirit to bring the necessary stretching as the reach expands and the tent pegs move beyond your comfort zone. It's good that you're here. You're a stabilizing influence even as you help others stretch their faith. This lady right here. Hi, what's your name? Brooke, do you mind standing, Brooke, just a minute? Brooke, uh, I saw this, that there's been, you've come through a, a hard season, a, a, a difficult, hardworking season. This summer uh, is a summer of rest. Just uh, take it easy this summer. Renew and refresh yourself in the Lord. In the fall, a new season will begin, a door will open up, and by the, the new year, you'll have the direction that you're lacking today. It's a time to rest from the, the work that has been done from the, from the past season. So come into a season of rest this summer. Just relax. Don't make it too hard on yourself. Just say, hear the Lord say to you. It's a season of rest. Enjoy. Have a fun, fun summer. The fall will give clarity of, of direction into a new season, and by January, everything will clear up. You'll see what God's been doing. Amen? God bless you, Brooke. There was, a, there was a young lady that was standing about right here during worship, and she moved on me. She had a, she, I think she was wearing a blue dress, had auburn hair, but she was about right here. Uh, looks to be in her late 20s, 30s. I don't know, I may be wrong about that but she was right here during worship. She had hair, kind of shorter hair about down to here. Maybe she was an angel. <laughs> if you know her or see her, or you want to buy this word, just let me know. <laughs> this afternoon, uh, the Lord gave me a picture of someone. He said, there'll be a man in a Hawaiian shirt sitting in the middle. And I thought, well, that's got to be God, because who's going to wear a Hawaiian shirt in Michigan? <laughs> so, and there he is right there. Can you stand up, sir, and yell out your name? Uh, Jim. 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 Uh, I heard Isaiah 24, 15 for you. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the islands of the sea. I believe there's a call on your, your life to island people and people who live along the sea. 
this is not all you are or all that you're called to do, but I sense an increasing favor for you among people of the islands and along the coastlands. I don't know if you're going to go there or they're going to come to you, but there's going to be a favor. So you'll know this word is true. Another will confirm the word and an effective door for service will open to you. Don't be afraid. Be thankful. Don't be anxious. Walk in the peace of the Lord. Do the work of an evangelist and take God's healing to the nations that you either go to or that they come to you. Uh, in some ways, your ministry is just getting cranked up. It's not diminishing. Amen. Are you two a couple? Would you stand up and tell me your names? Stephen. Amy. Stephen and Amy. Uh, life, Ecclesiastes says that life is lived in season. Everything has, has its season. There's a time for, and it goes on to list several things. I, I had the sense that you guys have been in a season, a season coming to an end. Um, just like winter when it drags on a little longer, or summer when it has been hot and is coming to an end, you're ready for a season to end. What the enemy wants us to do in, in seasons is project and say, this isn't a season, this is the way it's going to be forever, and it's not. A season's coming to an end. A new season is going to begin for the two of you. And in the transition, you'll see the fruit, the, the little upshoots of the change of season that you're entering into. Don't, don't uh, reject it or deny it. Embrace it as a new season brings new growth, new opportunities, and the, the work of God. It's a new season that you're entering into. God bless you both. This young lady right here, can you stand up and tell me your name? Maya. Maya. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. God's doing something with 11 and 12-year-olds all over the world. I don't know what's up, but when Jesus was 12, he was confounding people with what he understood. And I think you're part of that group of 11 and 12 and 13 year olds that God is raising up in this hour your generation are going to be full of heroes and you're going to be one of them there's a call on your life it's real there's an anointing on your life you're going to prophesy I saw you with a suitcase that had that had uh, stickers from different nations and I saw that you were going from place to place and you were sharing the good news of Jesus and you were prophesying to nations these are all big things. Maybe you can talk it over with your folks and see what God wants. Uh, but I, but I'm, seeing, I'm seeing something very special in you. Is it okay if I pray for you? Father, I pray for my little sister. Lord, everywhere I've gone the last few months, you've had me find 11, 12, 13-year-old and call them into their generation and say, Go prophesy. Go be the good news. Stand up an exceedingly great army in your generation and be heroes, be real heroes that changes the world. You're going to be in that company. You're a very special young lady. God's got his hand on you. Amen. Hi. <laughs> this is for you. What's your name? Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Do you mind standing? Lindsay, I, I uh, saw the word yes over your life. Uh, and I had this impression that you've been asking the Lord to confirm something, a, a direction or a decision that you're making. And I simply heard him say, tell her I said yes. Tell her I said she's on the right path. The answer is yes. Amen. God bless you. Paula. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, don't neglect the gift that was given you when the elders or the presbyters laid their hands on you and imparted gifts to you. One of the things I can do and that you can do is whatever you've been given, you can give away. So what I want to do is I want to pray a prayer of impartation for anyone that has a prophetic gift, whether it be in music, whether it be in prophesying, whether it be in the creative arts, uh, it can be... Uh, poetry, it can be drama, it can be, uh, it can be something on the internet that's creative. 
But if you've got some kind of a prophetic unction that you know is rising up in you, then I'm going to ask you to be bold and don't worry about being humble. Just stand up if that is you, and I'm going to pray, and Tom may pray too for all those that feel they have a prophetic gift that's trying to surface or is already surfaced in your life. I'm going to pray a prayer of activation over you. Thank God. Thank God. Go ahead and put your hand on your heart, and don't, don't look at anybody around you. Uh, I just want you to be able to receive into your heart this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I think you've shown me that this is a prophetic church, and so naturally there's going to be lots of prophetic people raised up, not just for this building, but for this city and this state and all over. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, I impart that propheticness that you put in Tom and I. I impart that on these that are standing. And that, Father, they would, from this point on, there would be a new confidence, a new creativity, a permission to go ahead and begin to even take baby steps or to pay, take greater steps than they've ever taken before. In Jesus' name, I pray a prayer of impartation, and I release the prophetic to a greater measure in these that have stood. And, Lord, they won't all be like me. They'll, some of them won't be like me at all. Some of them will prophesy and ways we haven't even imagined. But Father, I pray that it goes near and far. People in the earth need to know that God sees them. God speaks to them. And Lord, use these in whatever gifts they have to release your word in creative ways into those that are around you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So good. I have a. So, hey, what's your name? Zach. Zach? Uh, a sharp, sharp mind, highly intelligent, uh, very skilled in speech. You, you have an ability, you have a quick wit about you. You, you don't lose many arguments. <laughs> but, but the Lord is shaping you. <clears throat> to be a voice into a new generation. He's teaching you how to use that gift and to point that gift in a strategic way like a surgeon would uh, to do their surgery on a, a given area. And if you'll yield yourself to the, the molding, shaping work that God is doing, you will be a tremendous influence in the years ahead. You, your, your mind will be used to give intellectual and uh, uh, argue against the, the arguments of this world, and you'll be relevant not only to your generation, but a generation above and a generation below. You, you will be an influencer in a great, great way. Yield yourself to God, trust in Him, and He'll lead you in the way that you should go. God bless you. <laughs> This man right here. Yes, sir. Good. You're a big guy. <laughs> What's your name? Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi. Gary, I, I saw this. I, was, I looked at you from behind, and my thought was you're a mighty man, and you are a mighty man. Uh, you've, you've cleared the way. I don't know if you played football or not, but you, you look like you could have. <laughs> a long time ago. You, you've cleared the way for people. You've, you've stood in the gap for people in a very practical sense. But there's a spiritual intent that God wants to stir up in your life. You, you are a spiritual man, a mighty man. You hear God. You, you hear God like Wayne was talking about tonight. And that you press into God for, for things, for your family, for your, your career, your work. And uh, you will influence people's lives if you'll speak what you know. You, you have the ability to do that, and you'll be a mighty man in the spirit, just as you have been in, in your flesh. Do it, do it. Don't be afraid. God's with you. Amen. God bless you. I would like for the, uh, the worship team, anybody a part of the worship team, if you would just stand up, uh, either tonight or any time that you're part of the worship team here. 
your songwriters please stand up as well. During worship tonight, I saw musical notes coming off, coming off you. And they were going up and they were going to the left and going to the right and they were going forward and some were going backwards. I think honoring what's gone before. And I think this is going to be a, like a sort of a modern day song releasing place. Songs are going to come. They already have. I know that. But songs are going to continue to come, and they'll go all over, all over the world. And they'll become the lyrics of people's lives. But I encourage you, in Jesus' name, avoid pride and competition like the plague. Avoid it. Do not let yourself get, no matter what people are saying about how great you are, it's about how great God is. You've got to do that. And when the world comes and wants to exploit your gifts for their gain, be discerning enough to know when to make an alliance and when to not make an alliance. I want to pray for you, and I want to release some songs in you that are going to touch the world. Some, I know some already have. I already know that. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the, those, all those on the worship team, whether they're in... Uh, whether they're doing media or sound or lights or music or, or vocals or instruments, Lord, I pray that they would prophesy on their instruments. Sometimes they would prophesy in a selah, in a moment of silence in the middle of the music. They would learn to be able to facilitate what you want to do, Holy Spirit. And I pray that world-class lyrics will come, things that aren't trite, that aren't a repeat of what someone in the world has done. Creative new songs, phrases that just drop out of heaven that are exactly the right word, the right prosody between word and music. And Father, I pray that this church would become known as a Mecca for miracles and music. Miracles and music. Miracles and music. I just release them to excel still more in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I just have a thank you. I just have one more word, and it's for the church. It's for Radiant Church, and I, I got this on June the first. Uh, I was praying for you one morning, and and uh, I just wrote Radiant on my screen, and I begin then I begin to type what the Lord gave me. And I saw much movement for Radiant Church over the next five years. The Holy Spirit is doing a fresh work within individuals of this church body that will release a greater impact beyond your borders. I saw you moving beyond the church walls into the surrounding area, spilling over into this city and other cities and nations. I saw readjustments of roles and responsibilities, realignments of methods with mission and vision, recalibrating of activities from those that no longer have life to those that breathe life around you and through you and beyond you. It's not just about change. It's about spiritual transformation. God's presence transforms people. And when people are transformed, they transform places. Keep prayer and worship as a primary priority. I saw a new Jesus movement, a new spiritual awakening breaking out in this church, this city, as it is across the nation already. I saw you pushing through the consumer what's in it for me atmosphere of this age. You're embracing a bold and courageous, it's no longer about me, missional heart for those around you. The enemy of our souls won't like this, but you mustn't be afraid to move when the cloud says move. I heard words Moses spoke to Joshua in Deuteronomy as if they were being said to you, be bold, be strong. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. And I heard similarly for you what God spoke to Joshua three times. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
Discouragement removes courage from. Encouragement puts courage into. Therefore, encourage one another daily. As I was finishing writing this word, I kept hearing a song in my heart. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. These lyrics could fly like a banner over this house. It's your testimony. It's my testimony. It's our testimony to the world. You can be a child of God. Be encouraged. Often when we do ministry like this, we will pray and ask the Lord if he has a word uh, to give us for the church. And uh, I hadn't coordinated this at all with Wayne. Uh, I just, in my quiet time this morning, was, as I was praying uh, for this, this evening's service, uh, I was praying for Radiant Church. I was praying for Lee and Jane. I was praying uh, for the, the, the ministry team here. And uh, I was really quickened with this word. I think it fits well with what uh, the Lord had given to Wayne. Isaiah 54, 1, shout for joy, O barren one. You who have no child, break forth into joy, shouting and cry aloud. You who have not travailed, for the sons of the desolate will, one, will be more numerous and then the sons of the, mar- uh, of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. And the descendants will possess, and your descendants will possess the nations. And will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not. For you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated. For you will not be disgraced but you will will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. A day of harvest is coming. It will be a day of bountiful abundance of souls. Those who have been closed, closed and hard to reach will come with open hearts and ears to hear what they have previously been unwilling to receive. Your heart of outreach is connected to the harvest, so think big. Think outside these walls. Expand your tent and prepare your mind for those who are to come. Your house will be filled with the joys of new life and the playful energy of the young. Expand your foundation. Prepare the place and the systems to accommodate what is coming. For I'm assigning you the work of parenting the new birth. When the work becomes tedious and taxing, remind yourselves that these are that that these you are preparing will possess nations and resettle des- desolate cities. Stand firm and do not give in to the fear of shame because you have thought big and prepared. Your expansion will not go unfulfilled. Yours are not the dreams of youthfulness or the desires of the unqualified. Your dreams are the projection of faith. Stand firm and I will pour my goodness into and through your willing hearts in the days ahead. Amen. Well, we receive that. We receive those words. Amen. Can we just all stand up? Is tonight powerful? Anybody receive something tonight? Those were just great words, guys. I happen to know a couple of the individuals that you were prophesying over, and uh, the words are right on. One of them, Tom's my son in law. Uh, he's our youth pastor in Richland. So. Tom didn't know that, <clears throat> but the Lord did, right? I just feel like there's a, uh, a, a woman, you're married, and you came here, you're by yourself, and you came, and you're in a place of desperation for your marriage, and, and you're getting bad counsel from some people that are in your life. So the part of you that loves God is telling you to fight for your marriage, but you're getting some bad counsel. And you came tonight really hoping that God would highlight something. And uh, God just is is highlighting you to me. 
And uh, what the Lord wants to say is you need to silence the voices of the one who wants to destroy your future, and you need to open your heart once again to believe that God can bring about a miracle. Don't harden your heart in the middle of that situation. So whoever that's for, you, you, you take that and mute the voice of the liar and turn up the volume on the voice of the Lord in your life. And he's gonna do a miracle in your life. <clears throat> Man, good stuff. So Lord, we just seal everything that's been said. And Lord, every word that you've spoken, let it come to pass. Lord, uh, reminded the parable, you said that the word is, it, it lands on all kinds of different ground and immediately the enemy comes to steal the word. I pray, Father, that every word that was spoken would find good prepared soil and that it would bring forth a harvest to the glory of your name, that no enemy, no bird of the air would come and have an opportunity to steal it. Let every word that is from you come to pass. And Lord, we give you the honor and the glory, Father, because you are a good shepherd and you love to speak to your children. And I pray that tomorrow morning when all of these sheep and all of us, when we get up and we find our place to be alone with you, I pray, Lord, that the confidence we have that you're a good shepherd and you speak to us will elevate in all of our lives and we'll have ears to hear what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.